everyone, and welcome to the Kauai County Council Roundup live here at the Hoike Studios. Uh, we will be covering yesterday's uh, com committee meetings uh, on August 7th. Um, I'm Chair Mel Raposo with Vice Chair Kipukai Koli. Aloha. And again, thank you to Hoike for allowing us this place and Roger, our cameraman. Mahalo. We had two items on the agenda yesterday. Uh, first up was a briefing from the University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization, also known as UHERO. Uh, they do a bunch of studies and reports for, uh, for all kinds of agencies, and they did a recent report on Kauai's economic outlook for 2024. So they came and presented a uh, very informative presentation. They did a PowerPoint, uh, basically telling us what, what we already know, but uh, they did provide some forecasting. Um, some of the data was from 2022, so some of the information was a little outdated, but I think the trends are are uh, all accurate. And again, uh, we, we feel it every day. So uh, I thought, Kipukai, I thought it was a really good briefing, very informative. and picked Very up a lot informative, of very thorough, a lot of graphs, a lot of not the most positive news. <laughs> and like you were saying too, the, even though the data was showing till 2022, since then it's gotten even worse. Yeah. The prices of houses went up further. Um, you know, the job vacancies, I mean. I think one of the um, most glaring data that they talked about was the, what, what, the income to a household would be needed to purchase a new house at the median price range. And again, using 2022 data, they came up with a um, with, with an income of $176,000. Yep. And we all know that that's, that doesn't hold true today. And in fact, they did a housing uh, study, a housing report for all the islands. And in that report, which is more current, um, it, it was adjusted and it was well over $200,000. Yep. But you know, when we're looking at a median home price of uh, over a million dollars here on Kauai, you know, it's difficult. And I think my takeaway was that for our local residents here, young and old, but more for the younger families, the dream of, of home ownership at the current time is pretty much non-existent. And it's, it's just sad, but it is what it is. So, is it 220,000, two professional incomes. That means each person would need to make over a hundred thousand there aren't a lot of hundred thousand dollar jobs on this island <laughs> and and you know the way they figure it out is they use a standard formula of 30 percent of your income going to housing so at that income at two hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars that doesn't take into account the other requirements the luxuries of life like food electricity water Child care. Uh, yeah, child yeah. care. And then, of course, um, insurance for your house and, and all of these things. So it's uh, and then the other big thing is a down payment. Uh, I'm not sure where right. people talk about two, three percent down payment unless you're a veteran and you're utilizing the veteran programs. Uh, based on what I've been reading, you need 20 percent. So at a hundred, I mean, at a million dollar home, uh, 20 percent, that's 200 grand. I don't know too many people that have 200 grand in a bank. Uh, starting off as a young family that can go out and purchase a home. So, like you said, it was it was not very positive news, but it is it is it, what it is, and that is the reality of the world we live in today. And um, I can only hope that at some point soon there will be a correction, and um, our kids will be able to come back home. So, yeah. Anyway, um, and then after that we had an update. I requested an update from Public Works because there is a lot of concern in the community, and I'm hearing more and more of it now regarding the status of our landfill out in Kekaha or Mana and what are the plans when that fills up, which right now we have about three years left on that landfill. There are a couple of plans to expand vertically uh, as well as laterally, but that's all tentative. We don't know. We haven't gotten any approvals yet. So for me, I am concerned because uh, we, we really don't have a plan for a new landfill. We don't have a plan for uh, what happens after our existing landfill fills up. There was also a lot of discussion last year about possibly looking at alternative technologies such as waste to energy or something like that. And uh, our administration has been working on an RFP, a request for proposals going out 
uh, to different vendors. Um, they've been working on that for quite a while and it still hasn't left the building. It's still here. It has not gone out. So we haven't received any proposals, obviously. So I'm concerned. And I think there's a lot of people that are concerned, yeah, especially Chair, those out on the West Side. And Chair, this was your item, right? You requested this update. And I like that at the beginning of the meeting, you put the questions forward. And then in their presentation, they mostly tried to answer most of the questions. But the first question was, where are we at with the Kekaha expansion, the landfill, right? And then is the Kekaha site, the new site, even available from the state? And then is the Ma'alo site still an option? the one that didn't work out so far. And then what are the available alternative technologies? And then the last question is, regardless of what we do, what are we doing to, our expand, to expand our diversion programs and efforts? The one thing, starting with the diversion efforts, I mean, I was happy to hear at least when um, Allison from Solid Waste told us that the disposal rate has been pretty steady for like six years now. So that means we're not, creating more trash, but we're also, that means we're also not creating less trash. So obviously we have to do more when it comes to diversion. And Allison did give a whole listing of all the different programs. And it sounds like there's a lot of good stuff in place, right? But we obviously need um, each of us as individuals with our own homes uh, need to participate more, right? To compost on our own and Cherry, you even told a story about your own composting experience right you said you checked out what is it called Kauai compost compost Kauai I mean Kauai. you know I obviously was not composting I mean everything everything we did recycle our plastics we did recycle our aluminum cans we don't have a lot of recyclables at our house but um at a, at a briefing, I think it was at one of our council meetings we we heard about what compost Kauai does and basically they come to your house pick up your food waste once a week and you take it away and I you know I felt like I should be part of the solution so I did and I subscribed to their service and did they actually bring you a bucket or they yes, tell you what kind of bucket no, to get they bring you a bucket they deliver it to your house inside the bucket there's a, a paper compostable bag and you put your food right in there and there's you, a bucket that seals up pretty good so I, you don't have like to big five gallon all the rotting food you don't smell the rotting food <laughs> And what we do, to be honest, um, my wife Patsy, what she'll do is she'll, she'll put it in a bag, she'll put it in the freezer, um, and then Sunday nights she'll take everything out, she'll put it in the, in the bucket, and then we take it out. Um, because I, I don't want to take a chance. And they come and pick it up. And then, yeah, in, in my area, they come every Monday morning, they, they pick it up, and they swap the bucket. They give you a brand new bucket that's clean and sanitized. But, but this is what I've observed is that it was incredible how much diversion we have at our little house with two people that, in fact, there's been probably three times since we started the service several months ago that we actually only have one barrel. Now, we, my mother-in-law lives next door, so she has a barrel, I have a barrel, and we, and we have one big barrel, one small barrel. And uh, on several occasions, we were between the two houses, we were able to only put out one barrel. So that just is proof that that little diversion of food waste makes a difference. So, And you had said, too, that um, was it Ruta Jordan's that you were talking offline prior to the meeting, where if every household did... If every person... So Ruta Jordan, if you don't know, I, I think she actually comes Zero in here and does videos, but she's with Zero Waste Kauai, and, and she told me something several months ago. She said, if every person on Kauai did increase their... Diversion. They're diversion by half, only half. Recycle. Yeah, if compost. you only recycled half of what you're throwing away, um, you would double the life of the landfill. It's, it's pretty like, basic yes, and logic, it's right? Math. <laughs> and it is. And you know, it, it 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 took me a long time to to hear those words, and then when I heard it, it was very profound. And it is so true. So right now, Kipuka, and this is you know whatever we decide to do, whether it's a new landfill, whether it's a new technology, we are not going to be able to have a, uh, something in place to fill that gap of when that mm -hmm. new technology or the new landfill opens up. So the only thing we can do is increase our diversion so that we can extend the life of our existing landfill. And the county is going to have to pay. I mean, I, 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 we, off, we asked them, you know, is there anything else that we as a county can do? And the, the truth of the matter is that in order, if we want to increase diversion, we got to make it convenient for, yep. the, for the, the residents, or 
we got to provide some very serious incentives for people to do so. We didn't talk about it at the council, but I know the county has this program where you can go to solid waste where the Lihui um, transfer station is and watch a short video and they'll give you one of those, uh, it looks kind of like a trash container, but it doesn't have a bottom and a cover. It's this black uh, container that you can put your food waste in. I mean, there's a whole way to actually do composting, but if you don't have the time or energy, the way I do it at home is I just throw it in there and I leave the cover off so the chickens kind of get in and help themselves. And it's amazing what you're not putting in the landfill is just in your backyard and disintegrating. I think you don't put meat and you don't put dairy, but everything else pretty much, all the cuttings from the vegetables. And yeah, you can actually put some meat. Uh, it was they give you an instruction sheet, and it, but it cannot be more than twenty percent of the, of the volume of your of organic. So, it, it's just the, the point is that we gotta do better. Uh, we yeah, all gotta do better, everyone, uh, because we're gonna be in a world of hurt. Uh, we did talk about some technologies and council member. Cooley, Before you go there, I want to say Allison talked about um, changing behavior, and the 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 like the Hawaii Hawaii Five High Five. So I had asked her too, so this is in place, right? Recycling, some people do it, some people don't. It's too much of a hassle, but there has to be a financial incentive too, right? But this was started in 2006 and you got a, a nickel, five cents for returning, right? Well, in what, 18 years, they haven't even raised that amount. In some other states, it's up to 10 cents. But I'm thinking if it's truly a financial incentive, they should look at increasing it. So Adelson said, from our side, we can lobby the state and push them to follow some of the other states and increase that rate as well. So. We're going to have to do something, and uh, I'm going to have to do something soon. I, I did want to chat a little bit about the technologies. The, well, the landfill first, because I know Kipukai, you asked the question, well, I asked the question, and you had to re ask the question. But, you know, are we, do we have site control of the proposed landfill site in Kikaha across mm -hmm. the highway? And the answer is no. So we don't even have finality on that and that is of concern because we don't have time i mean we cannot be doing anything else until we know that we have that land available so that's a concern the other question was maalo road uh, up by wailua falls if that is available mayor when when uh, when council member cavalio was the mayor mm -hmm. he had spent a lot of time working with the, the private sector with the state with the county council uh, who myself and kipukai kuli were on at the time and came up with a, a potential solution of Maalo Road being the next site. And um, it was on track. And then uh, when the new administration took over, they different priorities, you know, and that's the prerogative of the mayor. And um, that that program or that plan was was pretty much put on a shelf. And the, the intent was to move or build a new landfill on in Kikaha. The concerning part is now, you know, the, the community on in Kikaha are not very happy about it. You know, they've been burdened with the old landfill. Um, so we really got to focus on looking at if Ma'alo is still uh, an option. Um, I know when we were trying to get um, the Solid Waste uh, Public Works director to commit, he finally kind of said that <clears throat> the State Department of Transportation Airports is not willing to approve the site. And it basically um, because of the birds, right? Yeah. Caused by birds. Yeah, that, that it was a huge blow to them when HD, HDOT um, kind of said no. You know, so I was like, well, just tell us that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we still got a lot of questions that we gotta we gotta get answered. But that that so that's one option. And the, the second option is is a new technology. And you know, Kipukai, uh, Councilmember Kuli, myself, and Councilmember Cavalio were at a conference in Tampa a month or so ago, and we actually visited one of the waste to energy facilities in Tampa. That I, think, I, I didn't get to go, oh, you unfortunately, because I had board meeting at oh, the yeah, time, but it was you, Cavallio, and the Costa. Uh, I said the Costa that. went. Yeah, our, our public works chair was there and, and, and Councilor Cavallio. I apologize. I thought you were there. No worries. I wish I was there, yeah. but I had to be at a board meeting. <laughs> but we went and we, we got to take the whole tour. Now, this is a plant that, that uh, handles much more trash than we have here on Kauai. But we did have a chance to talk with, with the operators of the facility and, and ask how would a facility like that uh, fair here on Kauai with about 200 tons of trash a day. Uh, remember now, this is the waste to energy. This is where you roll the trash in these bins and they burn it and it creates energy. Uh, that specific technology, which is the similar technology to what we have on Oahu at H-Power, mm -hmm. costs a lot of money. And um, 
he gave me a ballpark figure about 1.2 billion dollars to yep. build a plant on Kauai. So as soon as he said that, it, I knew that that was not an option for Kauai. There's no way we're going to be able to finance 1.2 billion dollars for a waste to energy plant, and it, it's not so much the 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 lower the smaller size or the lower volume of trash. It's just these things cost money to build, and it, it doesn't really matter whether it's 200 tons a day or 500 tons a day, the technology, the burners, the, the scrubbers, all of that is pretty much the same. It's just the cost for the smaller counties are a lot more, the cost per ton is a lot more. Um, but he did share with me three other companies that provide modular technologies that could work on Kauai, and we're exploring that as we speak. So, And ultimately, what Solid Waste is working on is the RFP to go out and hear from potential different um, uh, operators, uh, designers, planners with the different technologies. So it's just open. We want to see what kind of options might be up th out there that might work for us. So. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is. I mean, again, you know, I'm I'm, I'm afraid of what's going to happen in the next few years, and you know, and I, I don't know <laughs> if there are no technologies available, then we are stuck with a landfill, and then uh, it's. It takes about 10 to 12 years to, to get, get a landfill, landfill open uh, from start to finish to permitting, planning, design, and all of that stuff. And it'll even take four years just to do the expansion of the existing landfill. So, so we a lot are, of hoops to jump through. Yeah. And We're not cutting much it room. close. Not much room. <laughs> and, you know, this laugh, and it, it's a nervous laugh. It's not a <laughs> joyful laugh. It's a concerning laugh because... We have, we have been discussing this for many, many, many years. And that's why I put it on the agenda because I think the public deserves to know that, hey, listen, we have a crisis, we need to pay attention, and we all gotta do our part. And doing our part means diverting as much as you can from the landfill. Meaning if you gotta drive down to the, the old uh, Walmart, not Walmart, but the old, um, what's that place? Home De not Home Depot, what's that place where Target K Kmart, where the old Kmart is, and you got to go put your cardboard, your plastics, and all of that. Back the recycling. Yeah, go take a ride, man. Take the family. Go buy ice cream. And you got to make Kapa, too. Yeah, Kapa, mm -hmm. right by the armory, by yep. the Kapa ballpark. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's that critical. And I think for my concern was that I don't see the sense of urgency by our yeah. administration. At this, and, and, and that's what we need to have because this is not, this is a very serious matter. And hey. three years from now, four years from now, if we don't have a plan in place, I, I don't know what we'll be doing. You had mentioned to Allison them also um, that, um, you know, we have our pay as you throw program. So you put the bigger cart out, the larger cart filled with trash, you pay more. Um, so if you do start diverting, then you won't have to put the bigger cart out. You can put the smaller cart out and you'll actually save money. So I have the littlest cart myself and I only put it out every three weeks, mostly because it's just two of us in the house and all my food waste pretty much goes in the yard and you know recycle everything yeah a little bit extra effort but i do it for for the aina because i love the aina <laughs> and, and again that that's a great example of how we can all do our share and um you know the other thing too is you know we all have junks in our yard that you know when you do your cleaning every so often and you just toss it away put them on your facebook page and say hey free Give them away. Reuse it. Have, I, I don't think I've ever been this concerned. I've always been concerned about our solid waste issue, but I'm, I'm concerned. I'm very concerned because that window is shrinking and we're running out of time. And I don't want to scare the people, but yet I want to scare the people because it's the truth. And if we don't, if we don't increase the diversion and extend this life of this landfill, we're going we're gonna to be in a, in a bit of trouble in the next few years. So Even the collecting of... Uh, bottles and cans, the aluminum and all of that. It's fairly easy to collect them, give them the big bag. The, the hardship sometimes is just gathering them all up and taking them into the redemption center and all that. But there's probably somebody in your family who could use a little extra few dollars and would probably do it. I know that's how we do it in my family. We all kind of do it for dad. Kind of. Yeah, that's what we do. I mean, <laughs> we get all my bags um, and then I call my nephew. Hey, we got some bags and he comes and he's happy to take them mm -hmm. and you know make some decent money and uh and more if they double the rate <laughs> to 10 cents yeah we're gonna have to do something about that because it 
You double the rate. I think you, you. I said it earlier, right? Incentives. You got to provide incentives or convenience. That's the two things that's going to make people uh, be more more um, diversion oriented. So anyway, fun times, yeah. fun time. But anyway, again, I want to thank uh, Huike for allowing us to do this every week. Uh, we, you can watch the council. This is a great discussion, by the way. If you haven't watched the meeting, you can watch it on Huike Channel Fifty Three, or go to our website, the county website at www.kawai.gov. Click on the website meeting and look for the August Seven meeting, and you. It's, it, you, you'll see it. It's the second item of the day. You get the briefing from your hero, and then you get to watch the solid ways briefing you with some some amazing information. And you can do that for any of our meetings, or you can tune in live uh, on the webcast meetings uh, on our website on Wednesday mornings at eight thirty. So, yep. with that, again, uh, Roger, thank you, our cameraman, Roger and uh, Huike, Mr. Kuli. Appreciate Aloha. you being here. Appreciate Until you. Until next week, Ahui ho. Aloha. Aloha.